Hello guys, you might have seen these photos of many world leaders dressing up in similar clothes and posing for a photograph. Ever wondered why? Today I, Shubham Sonekar and Maninder Jeet, my documentary partner, are going to answer this question. These photo sessions happen at APAC, which is our topic for today's documentary. APAC, which is also known as an Asia-Pacific Economic Corporation, it is one of the biggest trade blocks in the world. It covers almost 21 countries. It started with an attempt to ease up the trade barriers between the countries surrounding the Pacific Ocean. As of 2018, APAC countries account to, to 60% of the world GDP and 48% of the world trade. That stands for Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. It's a bit like a club made up of 21 developed and developing countries, including Australia. And together they count for more than 2.7 billion people and more than half of the world's money. APEC was started by this man, former Australian PM Bob Hawke, back in 1989. He wanted to bring together nations along the Pacific Rim. That means they're around the Pacific Ocean or islands within it. So they could talk about their economies, free trade and investment. While that might not sound super exciting, it is super important. Most countries rely on each other to trade sometimes billions of dollars worth of goods and services. And the idea of a regular meeting was to work out better ways of doing that. At first, APEC meetings were pretty cash. There weren't as many member countries and no world leaders. But in 1993, then US President Bill Clinton was like, hey gang, why don't all of us prime ministers and presidents go and hang out and talk about trade and stuff too? And that's how the APEC leaders meeting started. So now let's discuss the history of APEC. APEC was established in the year 1989, which is 12 countries. And the, later nine, and the remaining nine countries uh, joined later in the subsequent years. The first meeting took place in Canberra, Australia. In this meeting, the members addressed the need to increase trade and investment and the need to increase the living standards of the people and also the economic prospects of the Asia-Pacific region. This meeting was formally came to be known as APEC in the year 1993 and the world leaders decided to take part themselves rather than sending their counterparts. This is when the meeting began to be held every year. Since its formation, APEC has introduced many initiatives and agreements between the countries to foster economic growth and reduce tax barriers. The idea of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation or APEC was first publicly broached by former Prime Minister of Australia Bob Hawke during a speech in Seoul, South Korea on January 31, 1989. Ten months later, 12 Asia-Pacific economies met in Canberra, Australia to establish the APEC. The founding members were Australia, Brunei Darussalam, Canada, Indonesia, Japan, the Republic of Korea, now the Republic of South Korea, Malaysia, New Zealand, the Republic of the Philippines, Singapore, and the United States of America. The People's Republic of China, Hong Kong, and Chinese Taipei, and now Taiwan, joined in 1991, followed by Mexico and Papua New Guinea in 1993 and Chile in 1994. Peru, Russia, and Vietnam were the latest economies to join the organization in 1998. Now let's discuss the importance of APEC. The main motto of APEC is to reduce the tax barriers and tariffs, grow the economic cooperation between the different countries in the Asia-Pacific region. It provides a platform for discussions and collaborations for the member countries. They have addressed several issues like climate changes, sex trafficking, and also financially help those countries in need. It also provides new markets for the SMEs, also known as the small and medium enterprises or the MSMEs to venture into and sell their products without going through the trouble of excessive paperwork. Through Apex help, now uh, whoever wanted to expand their business can just do all the paperwork in just one place without, the, without any hassle. And also, the wait time for those to be for those paperwork to be approved have been reduced dramatically. The 
primary purpose behind the Apex establishment is the desire to have a forum that caters to the enhancement of economic conditions of countries. This would entail the facilitation of economic growth, trade liberalization, promotion of cooperation among members, and the creation of opportunities for investments in the Asia-Pacific region. The APEC has not only focused its attention on concerns relating to free trade and investments, but has also included in its agenda pressing regional priorities such as counter-terrorism, climate change, emergency preparedness, and global financial crisis. Thank you, Shubham, for sharing such a neat information about APEC, introduction, meaning, history, and importance. So now further information will be discussed by me, so hi, my name is Manindajit Singh. So now let's get started with the objectives of the APEC. So basically there are the three objectives of the APEC. The first one is trade and investment liberalization. The second one is sustainable and inclusive growth. And the last third one is economic and technical cooperation. So these objectives are also known as the three pillars of the APEC. Further information will be discussed in the following video. So now let's dive into it. How have we set about achieving these goals? Through three broad work areas, trade and investment liberalization, business facilitation, and economic and technical cooperation, also known as APEC's three pillars. The first pillar, Trade and investment liberalization focuses on opening up markets and integrating economies in the region. The second, business facilitation aims to improve the ease of doing business and reduce trading costs across economies. The third, economic and technical cooperation enables businesses to take advantage of global trade in a sustainable way. APEC helps the transition towards regional economic integration by ensuring that people are well placed to gain from global trade in the long term. I hope you like and understand the objectives of the APEC. Now let's talk about the most recent meetings of the APEC. Well, APEC generally held its meeting three to four times in a year, which is recommended by the APEC ministers and APEC economic leaders. The most recent meeting was held in Thailand in November 2022, which is APEC Summit 2022. Well, this meeting was held in person after a very long period of time, exactly after four years. Well, in this meeting, they discussed their main mission, which is Putrajaya Vision 2040. And in addition to this, they also discussed and proposed a new mission, which is Prosperity Vision 2030. They also discussed some key factors about economies recovering from epic hit of COVID-19. And they also launched women in APEC STEM principles and actions. Well, after a APEX Summit 2022 highlights, there is a short video of Putrajaya Vision 2014. Let's also enjoy this video. Thai Prime Minister General Prayutan Chai presided over the opening of the APEX CEO Summit 2022, emphasizing post-COVID economic recovery through the BCG model, inclusive growth and digitalization. General Brayut stated that cooperation and determination from all sectors, especially the partnership between the public and private sectors, are keys to building a sustainable and inclusive future. The 2022 APEC CEO Summit is one of the most significant gatherings as it is the first in-person meeting after a four-year postponement due to COVID-19. It shows that the region is ready to reconnect. The Prime Minister added that Thailand is focusing on sustainable development under the BCG model, along with the theme Open, Connect and Balance, as a national agenda and strategy to reboot the economy post-pandemic. Three important keys are also mentioned during the Prime Minister's speech. The first is sustainability through the promotion of environmentally friendly businesses and carbon reduction. The second key is inclusive growth through support for MSMEs and gender equality. 
And the third and last key is the digital economy enhanced by raising awareness of digitalization as well as boosting digital infrastructure. Interesting, right? So after meeting, let's move to the current events of the APEC. In August 2021, APEC launched APEC Women Connect program to promote economic empowerment of women in the digital economy. November 2022, in Thailand, during APEC summit, they also discussed about the COVID-19 climate change, digital transformation, and regional economic growth. APEC also been working simultaneously on various projects such as APEC CEAP that stands for Circular Economy Action Plan and APEC SCCF which stands for the Supply Chain Connectivity Framework in order to promote the inclusive growth. Well, which are these activities are also the part of Putra Jaya Vision 2040 and Prosperity Vision 2030. All right, Nick, the APEC economic leaders are charting uh, to path, a path to recovery following the pandemic. Now, what can we expect from those meetings? Well, the idea is very much that it's all about cooperation. We're told that there were 340 preliminary meetings heading up to this one where we have the leaders. And the idea is very much to push that idea of cooperation, working out a way forward, how to chart that path uh, for economic recovery after the pandemic. But more importantly, perhaps before that, there is this uh, problem of trying to ensure that vaccine distribution is happen happening uh, quickly and equitably around the region. So all of the leaders will be speaking about an agreement they're trying to put in place to reduce some of the trade barriers, things that are stopping those vaccines getting in. So reducing tariffs uh, or simply just making it easier at ports of entry, uh, stopping the blockages of uh, vital medicines, even things like masks, making sure that those can get through more effectively. So in the first place, very much trying to work out the vaccine distribution, but also looking ahead. So we could see some pledges, some promises uh, for those ideas to really try and push a path forward for all of the countries uh, as we emerge from COVID-19. Thank you, Nick Harper, live in Washington.